Hello. By now, you should have gotten one of these very exciting devices in that package that I sent you. Hopefully customs let it actually get to you. So this is your IO lab and it's going to be a fantastic device that we're going to be using throughout camp. But I do understand that it's a little hard to figure out if you're just looking at it and the software isn't the most intuitive. So we're put together this little video to kind of walk you through what all of these things on the front does uh, and how to use them using the software. So let's jump into my computer and I can show you around. So allow me to walk you through this IO Lab software. As you can see up here at the top, I already have my dongle plugged into my computer. And when I turn on the IO Lab, that remote device shows up. Down here along this side, we have all of the possible sensors that we can turn on. We can use multiple sensors at the same time in limited combinations. As you can see, if I turn on the accelerometer, some of the sensors are no longer operable. The accelerometer, as you can guess, measures acceleration in the X, Y, and Z directions as labeled on the device. The next sensors we're likely to use are analog 7, 8, and 9, which are voltmeters. If you don't know what volts are yet, that's fine. We're going to have a lecture about that, but just know 7, 8, and 9 can measure the number of volts going in. If I come down a little bit further here, I get to the force sensor. On the IO Lab, there is a threaded hole that we could put a variety of attachments into, and then we can measure how hard those threaded devices are being pulled away from or pushed into the IO Lab. Beneath that is the gyroscope, which again measures in the X, Y, and Z direction and keeps track of how the device is spinning in space. The high gain is a very, very sensitive voltmeter that measures the difference between the two plugs labeled G minus and G plus. We will use this for very sensitive volt measurements. The light sensor is literally a light sensor. It measures how much light is shining on the IO lab at that location. The magnetometer, believe it or not, measures magnetism, again, in all three of the cardinal directions. Some of you might be doing some experiments that involve the microphone. It's a microphone. It's right here. The last sensor on this list, which is probably my favorite, is the wheel, which you can see is actually three sensors, position, velocity, and acceleration. This is the wheel being referenced, and if you record and that wheel spins, it measures how much the wheel has spun as a position, the velocity that the cart must have been traveling to make the wheel spin like that, and the acceleration that the cart must have gone through to make the wheel spin that way. This is now a good time to talk about what we can see in these graphs. As we can see right now, the mouse is a cursor, which shows us the specific time and value of the plot wherever that cursor lines up. We can access the cursor by going up and pressing this button, which is the Analyze button. Now, some of these graphs are a little hard to see right now, so we can go to the Zoom options. Once we have selected the Zoom options, we can double-click, which will auto-scale. We can also do more specific zooms we, by zooming in along the horizontal axis, or zooming in along the vertical axis. And then once we're zoomed, we can click once to undo the zoom that we've just done, or we can double click 
to do an auto zoom. If we like where we are zoomed, but we want to move, we can select this option, which allows us to move the graphs around. Let's clear that data and try again. We can do that by hitting the reset button, which clears all of that data. To make this a little simpler, I'm going to get rid of position and acceleration just to simplify the picture. And we can record a new data set here. If we want to look at this a little more specifically, we already know how to do the zooms, but we can also press the y-axis setting to manually set those values or to auto scale. So we'll go ahead and manually set the minimum value to zero and the maximum value to four. And we like the way this looks. We want to do further analysis. So we can select the Analyze button here and select our data. And we immediately see some new things. We have the duration of time that has been highlighted. We have the average value of the data highlighted and its standard deviation, which doesn't make a lot of sense for this graph. We have the area under the curve, which is, as some of you who know calculus, the integral and is calculating calculating the area of this shaded insection and then we also have the slope being fit to that shaded insection now let's say we didn't really like this graph but we might like this graph we could take another one without getting rid of this one by instead of hitting reset by hitting add run now that data is saved and when we hit record we get this new data set. Rescaling to fit. This also nicely shows off that you can have negative values in that, in that integral, as some of you know. If we then hit continue, it will then start taking data again. Resetting again to show off one final feature on that axis. We'll take some quick accelerometer data just so we can see something and zoom it in so we can see it a little bit better. This last button here sets up some tools for how this data is presented. First off, we can see smoothing, which is a running average that allows us to make the data a little bit cleaner. You can see that if I jump up to 25, it got rid of a lot of noise, but it also got rid of a lot of details because now it's taking 25 data points together to make any given data point. So we're almost always gonna wanna keep that down at about one. There was also an option for a fast Fourier transform, which is real fancy and is gonna be not really used, but feel free to talk to someone about it if you think that's interesting. And then we also have the option to export to CSV. This turns this data into a file that can then be read into another program such as Logger Pro. So those are the sensors and measurements that can be taken by the IO Lab. The last thing I would like to show off is the fact that the IO Lab can also produce some signals. So if we go here and go down to expert mode, we can go to output configuration. Now, here we can see these new outputs just showed up. To go down the outputs on the front of the IO Lab, we have 3.3 volts here and here, which are a constant 3.3 volts we can use. We have our grounds here, here, and here, which is always the other side of a circuit. That is your zero voltage points. 
And as you can see here, with our outputs, we can take D6 and turn that on and off at given values. And much more interestingly, we have the DAC output, which we can turn on and off and set to any value between 0, 0.0 and 3.3 volts in steps of 0.1 volt. So there will be an experiment or two where we want to be able to finally control that voltage, and we can do so with that DAC out. So I hope this kind of quick guide to the IO lab piqued some of your interest and got you excited about looking at this. I will also say that there are many videos out there, uh, promotional videos, other teachers who have made videos that can walk you th through some of the finer points of the IO lab if you are particularly interested. But also feel free to talk to us. We love to talk about this equipment. And I think you're going to have a great time using this in some of our experiments this week. Thank you for watching.